Hello everyone, how are you today? Welcome back to my channel. I am Dr. Paramjeet. If you don't know me, I am a consultant physician, cardiologist in Yashoda Super Speciality Hospital, Nehru Nagar, Ghaziabad, Delhi NCR, India. And this is my channel. You are watching Doctor Education. Here I make videos about health and healthcare education. I make simplified medical explanations about the most common healthcare topics and whatever you ask me for. So today's topic is mitral valve regurgitation. So a lot of you might have found this written in your echocardiography reports on your routine health checkups. If you do routine health check, if you don't, then if you are above 30 to 40 years of age, 30, 40 or 50 years of age above that, then you should do a routine health checkup and an echocardiography. Echocardiography might show mitral valve regurgitation. What is mitral valve regurgitation? What happens? What are the problems which you might face? How it is caused? How it is treated? Do you, should you be concerned? So today we are going to talk about what is mitral valve regurgitation, what are the problems which you might face because of that and what causes it and finally how do we diagnose it and treat it and prevention is the most important key so how do we prevent it. So today's topic is MVI mitral valve insufficiency mitral valve regurgitation. So let's start but before that if you haven't subscribed to my channel already then go on first have a look at the videos on my channel there are a lot of healthcare videos which might concern you some of the videos are some of the topics will definitely help you out so don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon browse for your favorite topics and read about and know about them in the basic and the most in the basic and simplified language and the most updated healthcare information from international US health library we give you authentic medical information here so be connected stay healthy so let's start if you want to know about health and have health concerns then subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon you'll be notified about all upcoming videos. As you all know, the function of the heart is to pump blood and the heart circulates blood and the blood flows in a particular direction in one way direction. The blood does not flow in one vessel. It's not supposed to go back. So to make sure it does not go back and it goes in one way there are a certain valves in the heart which open in one direction and the when the blood tries to come back then it shuts down and it blocks it seals the back passage and therefore the blood cannot come back and in the next beat it opens again and therefore the blood just pumps forward there are four such there are four major valves in the heart and one of the most important one is mitral valve. Mitral valve is present in the left part of the heart which is the main part left ventricle which is pumping blood to all parts of your body. So mitral valve is present in the left part and its function is to make sure the blood flows to one direction and does not comes back. So mitral valve regurgitation is when the valve does not seal properly. That means there is a small leakage or there is a small problem, there is a big leakage, or there is some issue because of which the blood can actually flow back. And that may lead to problem if the leakage increases. So what causes mitral valve regurgitations? The most important reason is heart attacks or ischemia or what we call as blockage in the blood vessels of the muscles of the heart and what happens because of this this blockage leads to leads to loosening of the tone of this valve and that way what happens when the valve normally functions like this it can prolapse it can prolapse what do you mean by prolapse when it is functioning it can go like this and then this and then the so what happens where it does not seal while sealing it did prolapse and then there is a passage because of which the blood can flow back this causes regurgitation prolapse so first causes prolapse because of heart attacks 
Then second cause because of heart attacks what happens the heart can enlarge because of the heart enlarges what happens this valve stretches because the valve stretching it can again lead to leakage gap and then other causes include if there is a calcium deposit on the valve what will happen the valve will get thickened one part gets thickened other part is normal then what happens sometimes it happens it, it becomes irregular what will happen sometimes it becomes like this and therefore what happens there is a gap thickening so calcium deposits on the valves can lead to regurgitations this calcium deposits can happen because of infections inflammations and other things as well and calcium deposits also occur with age also third reason is rheumatic heart disease when rheumatic fever which happens after a simple strep streptococcal throat infection what happens the what happens is that the streptococcus bacteria infects your throat and your own immune system while fighting the streptococcus bacteria builds an antibodies which mistakenly attacks some part of your heart and damages your heart so that is called as rheumatic heart disease or rheumatic fever streptococcal infection causing this problem which can lead to mitral regurgitation and finally the fourth reason is infective endocarditis again the same thing there is infection inside the heart muscles inside the heart valves and that can lead to uh, damage to the structure and therefore leakage so that becomes all the reasons why you might have mitral regurgitation but don't worry a mild mitral regurgitation is nothing to worry about and it's very common can happen because of aging also that requires no such treatment but only monitoring you have to repeat the test echocardiography after 6 months 1 year 2 years whatever you feel or your doctor has advised and you can monitor the condition so mild mitral regurgitation mild mitral valve insufficiency does not need any treatment just monitoring and obviously you can look for the baseline cause and treat the cause then understand let's see what symptoms you might have because of mitral valve regurgitation so if you have a mild problem you might not have any symptom but if it is a moderate or a severe regurgitation what will happen first things first what happens the mitral valve is between the left part left ventricle and the left atrium so what happens when the mitral valve regurgitates regurgitates back into the left atrium that means the pressure inside the left atrium therefore the pressure inside the lungs increases pressure inside the lungs increases you can have coughing you might have shortness of breath you might have palpitations because the heart size may increase the heart's left upper chamber size may increase that can lead to palpitations dizziness sometimes you might develop some clots inside which might leave from there and go inside the brain or the lungs or the foot so it can go anywhere can cause thromboembolisms and that is a serious condition so apart from that sometimes you might have chest pain or weakness and fatigue as well so all these symptoms can happen and for complications we have seen like blood clot heart enlargements heart failures then uh, congestion of the lungs causing pulmonary edema all these things can happen as a complication of severe or moderate to severe mitral regurgitation so how do you treat it how do you diagnose it to diagnose it the most important step is echocardiography the only way is echocardiography you might feel or hear the regurgitation murmur by the stethoscope but you have to do an echocardiography to confirm its severity location whether it's mitral or any other valve which is leaking so what might be the treatment the treatment of mild mitral regurgitation is nothing treatment for mild regurgitation is management of your risk factors manage your weight your health your bp your heart rate look for heart attack symptoms look for uh, risk factors of uh, coronary artery disease look for rheumatic heart disease look for any calcium deposits in the heart so all these things are risk management so if there is mild no treatment needed follow up after 6 months 1 year repeat echocardiography if there is a moderate to severe condition severe regurgitation you have symptoms of heart failure or other things like already discussed 
then what treatment you need the biggest treatment is diuretics diuretics water pills pills which increase your urine output therefore will decrease the blood volume and decrease the pressure on the left part decrease the pressure on the lung decrease the pressure on the right heart therefore relieving you of your symptoms but beware the main problem is not getting solved here leakage is there will be there there is no treatment no medication which can actually reverse this leakage because it's a mechanical problem mechanical problem cannot be solved without a mechanical intervention only medications will relieve the symptoms the complications the problems which are caused because of the leakage so diuretic will help you relieving your symptoms second treatment will be heart rate and blood pressure management sugar management if your bp is high antihypertensive heart rate is high beta blockers or other treatments then you have to take blood thinners especially if the left upper part of your heart is dilated and you have palpitations arrhythmias blood clot risk then you have to have to take blood thinners sometimes throughout your life because you have a big risk of stroke and thromboembolisms all over the body so that's the basic treatment of this condition but after a certain stage if the regurgitation is very severe if your heart failure is happening if there is no uh, significant relief from all these treatments you might consider a valve surgery surgery is sometimes the best treatment or the basic uh, modality through which we can actually correct the baseline abnormality because it's a mechanical problem treatment has to be mechanical the surgeon might repair your valve and if it is not repairable it needs a replacement so mitral valve replacement can be done the, and the valve can be replaced by a bioprosthetic valve or a synthetic valve both valves work fine but both have their own benefit and drawbacks which we will discuss in a separate video but for the purpose of this video the treatment is all these things so if you have mild mitral regurgitation don't worry just do regular health checkups and look for all these symptoms if you have moderate to severe problem go to your doctor talk about all these treatments and discuss your chances so hope you like the video if you have any questions about this topic don't forget to write them down on the comment sections and if you like the video give me a thumbs up and subscribe my channel don't forget to hit the bell icon till next time stay connected stay healthy